Um, I do see that Patty Schuler is watching. I would like to give her a shout out because I came home from work today and I opened the email and I saw an email from Stampin' Up that Patty Schuler joined my Mary Stampers team of demonstrators. So welcome, Patty. I'm glad you made the leap and I'm glad you chose me. So she is my first demonstrator in Wyoming. Many of you know I have a goal to uh, have at least one demonstrator in each of the 50 states. Um, right now, I let's see, what do I have represented now? Um, gosh, it's been a while since I looked. California, Ohio, Kentucky, um, Indiana. I'm thinking I have an Illinois. Um, did have Pennsylvania. I'm not sure if she's going to carry on to the next quarter or not. But anyways, um, welcome Patty and please know that if you are not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love you to have you join my team. Um, we have a great group of demonstrators who are very willing and eager to share um, this common interest that we all have. Um, most of them are um, happy stampers or hobby stampers. They're just enjoying the discount. Some of them do some monthly classes um, or have a small group of customers, which helps them uh, get their $300 in sales every quarter to continue and get their own discount. And then, of course, if you would like to build a business, I'm happy to help you with that also. There is no pressure to um, be any type of demonstrator. You designate um, how much or how little you want to do with Stampin' Up! Um, so you know that I'm building a business and uh, I'm really enjoying it and uh, it's been a great thing for me. But of course, um, you know, you get to choose. Amelia's on here, she's on my team. I'm trying to scroll through real fast. Robin has been on my team in the past. Who else? Mary Lou's currently on my team. I think that's everybody tonight. So anyways, welcome to Patty Schuler. She took advantage of the extra, extra recruiting promotion. Normally you choose $125 in product and you pay $99 plus tax. Your starter kit always ships free. But during this month and next month through the end of August, you get to choose an additional $30 in product. So you're getting $155 of product and still you're paying just $99 plus tax and it's free shipping on that starter kit. As soon as that's done, you get to um, start taking advantage of your demonstrator discount. So this is also a great time because um, the holiday catalog pre-order starts August 1st, which is Thursday, and many people like to take advantage of that as a demonstrator. Plus you can get all of your holiday uh, stamping and crafting, paper crafting products uh, at a discount. Okay, so contact me if you um, would like to do that. And again, please uh, remember that bonus days end tomorrow night. Okay, all right, tonight we're going to focus on the Noble Peacock Suite. Okay, and remember that Stampin' Up! If you love all the products in the suite, by all means, you can order them. Um, with one item number and it gives you the price, which I love, just makes it super easy. Or if you just want the bundle of the stamp sets and dies, um, they have that as well and you're saving 10% off each of those. But it's a nice way for people who want, want to have it all to use one item number. If not, all the other things are um, identified by item number and price individually. Okay. So let me show you um, quickly things that are in there. Of course, it starts with the Royal Peacock stamp set. This is a two-step stamp set, and I will be showing you how to make this peacock in two steps using our wonderful placement tool, the Stamparatus, okay? And if you remember last week, I showed you how you can use the Stamparatus to make, um, to be sure that your sentiments are um, being stamped straight and centered. Okay, here are the um, dies called Detail Peacock Dies. And one great thing about this is 
a number, a couple of these do coordinate with the stamp images, but then there are other ones that don't have a matching stamp, but they coordinate with the stamp set and the other dies. So that's something Stampin' Up's been doing um, in the last couple of years, which I really like. We have an embossing folder called Beads and Baubles, okay? And it looks like this, okay? We have this beautiful ribbon, and it's um, it's got a nice shimmer it in it and some gold, but it's basically two of the colors um, to coordinate with this suite, Pretty Peacock and Old Olive, okay? But it also goes with some nice other greens. Um, I put a, up against the um, Granny Apple Green, and it was really pretty. Um, what was the other one I had out? I think it was Shaded Spruce. Um, so, you know, it certainly goes with other colors as well. But it's just a fun um, two-tone ribbon, and I love the shimmer in it. And then we have the beautiful Noble Peacock Rhinestones. Aren't these great? Of course they're going to be great for peacock cards, but quite honestly, even if you're not into the peacocks, I would still get these because you can use them um, for so many different, um, to embellish so many different cards for various occasions and holidays, okay? Um, and honestly, the colors in here, I'm trying to remember. Pretty Peacock, oh, I don't know. They're in the catalog, though. Gorgeous Grape, um, I think this is Blueberry Bushel. I'm not sure which one that is. Um, but anyways, the I think the names of those colors are in there, but they're just fabulous. And then finally, there are two paper packs that coordinate with this suite, okay? The first is the Noble Peacock Specialty Designer Series Paper, and this is what it is, okay? And you're gonna get 12 sheets, okay, of this. I think that's correct. Yes, 12 sheets. So you're gonna get four of each of these sheets, okay? Isn't it wonderful? Amelia, it's your favorite suite. You know, I'm not into peacocks that much, but darn it, I love this suite. <laughs> Isn't that funny how, you know, just some great products and fabulous colors and textures and images um, can kind of change your thinking. Okay, and then in addition to the specialty designer series paper, we also have these beautiful foils. The colors are um, Blueberry Bushel, Pretty Peacock, and Old Olive. And again, great for use with this product suite, but you can use them for so many others as well. Um, the foil takes um, uh, gives you really good impressions using embossing folders. That's something to try, okay? So we're going to be using all these things today. And, oh, and I've got the colors here. Okay, and these are basically the three colors of the papers. And I also like to use the Granny Apple Green when I'm working with these. It just adds a bit of brightness to it. Um, so don't be afraid to play around with other um, colors that you can work into this. I've also seen a lot of people um, putting in some gorgeous grape with these colors, okay? Um, Blackberry Bliss, lots of things you can do, okay? So let's get started, okay? First of all, I'm going to show you how to do some easy cards. You know, sometimes we just need quick and easy, um, but something that makes a statement, okay? So that's what we're going to do first, and then our last stamp will be doing the actual peacock and um, we will uh, stamp the peacock using the Stamparatus. Okay, so first of all, this is just a super simple um, card front I made, and I cut each of the um, Noble Peacock Specialty DSP sheets uh, one and a half inches by, let me think, three and a half inches, okay? They're each one and a half by three and a half. I just laid them down, and now I want to add a sentiment, and I'm just, for 
convenience sake, I'm just going to keep working with what I have here. Um, oh, this is great. You are incredible. You did it. So I'm going to pull some scrap paper and a couple of blocks here. And this is, whoops, there's nothing in there. This is a photopolymer set, okay? Actually, I'm going to do three on here. I uh, talked to my daughter, Emily, on, what was that, Saturday morning, I think, on my way to work. And she had three different exams last week. I said, how'd you do? She said, oh, I did pretty good. I said, oh, that's great. She says, yeah, I got all A's. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she's not one to brag, but uh, I'm really proud of her. She's working so hard, and she's definitely found... Um, something that she's going to love for a long time, I think. So this might be a card I send to her. Okay, so, and I think I will use the blueberry, well, maybe I'll use one of each of the colors. Blueberry bushel. Okay, and then I'll use a pretty peacock. And then I'll use, oh, I know as you're watching, right? How you always worry about me putting my arms in the ink pads. Um, yes, I did that today when I was getting ready. Whole arm, the whole arm. So what a mess. But I just had to laugh and I thought, oh, if Inez could see me now. Okay, and then we have this very little, you did it, which I'm going to put this over here. Okay, now I'm just going to pull out some punches. I think I will start, I'm not sure if this one and a half will work. No, we need to go bigger. So I'm gonna use this two inch punch for So Very Proud of You, the um, die cutting machine with your layering circle framelits or the, um, what was the other one? Um, the stitch shape framelits would be great to use as well. Any kind of framelits, really. I'm going to use this one here, and I'm probably going to cut it down. Okay. I love using punches for sentiments. And... Um, for this last one, I think I'll use this, but I'm not sure. I was thinking like that. It doesn't quite fit that way, does it? Yeah, I'll just go the regular way, but I'm, I'm trying to think, what can I do differently with this? Let me see. Okay, well, we're going to, we're going to do this. Okay, and I have an idea, and hopefully it'll work the way I am envisioning it. And if it doesn't, then I go to the next plan, right? Okay, so I'm just going to pop some of these up on dimensionals. I know, so she does worry about me. <laughs> well, it's nice to be cared about. <laughs> okay, and then this one, I thought, I might just put this here. Okay. Actually, I'm going to put this one down with some adhesive. I think like that. And then this last one, I'm going to put some, I think this one will fit. This is the edge of the large dimensionals left over. And do something like that. Okay? So what do you think? 
just a different way of how about like that I like this so just a different way to put on um, some fun um, sentiments sentiments don't always have to be you know one on the outside and one on the inside change it up but I think this stamp set um, really lends itself well to doing that okay okay so those were one and a half by three and a half okay now I want to make sure I have this cut the right size yes so this is a sheet of whisper white that has been cut to one and a half inches by I'm sorry not one and a half inches four inches by five and a quarter inches okay and then I have some strips that I cut very small. These are just one and a quarter by two and a quarter inch. But before I put these on my card front, I want to cut some Noble Peacock foil. And I said those are one and a quarter, I'm gonna remove this, one and a quarter by two and a quarter, right? So I'm just gonna go an eighth of an inch larger. So I'm gonna cut a strip of one and three eighths inches by two and three eighths, okay? And I'm going to do that for the other two as well, okay? Easy peasy. And you know what? Try try different layouts. Try different sizes um, of you know a same the same layout. You know, change up the sizes and you get a new layout. Okay, so one and three eighths by two and three eighths. Oops, that one's got a bent corner, so I'm gonna go this way. Thank you all for watching tonight. It's not too late to click the share button, and I sure would love it if you would share with others what we're doing tonight. Oh, and I should mention, um, I think most of you that are watching are on my Stampin' Peace VIP group. If you have not been on there um, in a while or you haven't seen the email, you really need to take a look because I am having an online BOGO sale. And the way this works is I, um, well, my daughter Andrea um, took photos of all of my retired stamp set and some of the uh, dies and some punches. And you can get each of those or as many as you want, retired products free. Um, you just pay the shipping on it. And um, you can get those free when you place an order, either online or by calling me or emailing me your order, um, of current product for equal or greater value. So for example, if you pick out two things that total $40, um, you can get those free you just pay the shipping on them, which would be $8 because I use the flat rate envelope so I can put several in. For those of you buying more than one or two things, um, know that I do um, combine shipping because I want to give you the best deal. And then um, you simply place an order for current product of $40 or more, okay? So that's how that works, but you can see, oh, and you need to claim the items, okay? And then I'll give you a couple of days to place your order, okay? So put claim or sold or something, but please only do that if you really intend to make the purchase, okay? If you really intend to place the order, but several um, people have already, which is wonderful. I'm trying to get to my goal of, um, $300 in career sales and I'm getting close but I'm not there getting close but I'm not there okay um, you know what before I put these down let's add some ribbon okay so um, I do hope that you will take advantage of that um, 
I would rather do that for my customers than, you know, try to be selling them on eBay and different things. I'd like to show my appreciation to all of you um, by offering the retired products um, with a BOGO deal. Hi Deb, hi Doris. Who else has joined us? Lisa Johnson, I think I saw your name. Um, Mary Lou's on. Okay. Jenny Gilbert on my team um, that I met in Cincinnati. Um, she's the one that made me this cute um, scissors charm. Laugh, an M for Mary, and a crown. Um, and she recently um, moved to Florida with her husband. They sold their home in Cincinnati and um, are going to be enjoying a life from Florida now. Oh, Cindy, <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Hey, better late than never, right? Um, and Cindy, know that after the Facebook Live ends, you can always um, find these on the Facebook page or the Facebook group because they get saved, okay? You can look up by date or you can go to videos in the left column. Okay, so I've got that. Now I'm ready to um, should, should I pop these up? Maybe I should pop these up. Um, oh, Cindy, thank you. I'll take a look at that when I'm finished. I think I'm going to put these up on dimensionals. It's a card without dimensionals, right? For heaven's sakes, Mary. I had lunch with my two nieces yesterday, which was really fun. We had a great lunch and great conversation and just good time. And then we even walked down the street a bit to uh, to where Grader's was from the restaurant to the ice cream shop, which was fun. But Avery, who's 16, um, starts back to high school in two weeks. And then her sister Allison, who will be a sophomore in Ohio State, I believe, um, is moving back to campus um, the following week. So it was fun to have a little special time with them. It was actually a birthday gift, but overdue, very late. Is anybody doing any crafting this week? If you are, I'd love to see and hear about what you're making. I have so much in the works here, It's it's really kind of pathetic sometimes I think maybe I should quit my other job but I would miss my clients too much <laughs> maybe someday I'll go back to that okay I'm going to scoot this one over a little bit dimensions dimensionals um it's also a nice way it kind of allows us to move things around a little bit has a little bit of um I don't know what's the word I'm looking for you know what? I'm going to do something different with the ribbon. Oh, you're making cards as you watch. Wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Okay, I think I tied my ribbon a little tight on there. There, that might be better. But I'm going to do something like this instead. It's a little tricky getting that knot just right. Okay. But you can see how I took the same basic layout of three vertical strips of DSP and I'm just changing it up a bit, okay? Now something I probably should have done first was stamp my sentiment, but I'm going for it. It's a photopolymer set, which will make it easy, easier for me to make it straight. So here's to an exciting future full of new adventures or congratulations on such an amazing compliment, com accomplishment. I'm gonna go an exciting future full of new adventures. 
my niece Allison um, joined a sorority. I forget what it's called. I can't think of it. But they do a lot of service projects and things like that. And she's excited and will be living in the sorority house. So this is a new chapter for her. I think I'm going to use, I don't know what color to use. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? So I'm going to use blueberry bushel. Excuse my head. I'm going to stamp that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. And again, super simple. I basically was um, took the idea from this one, uh, cut smaller strips, and work from there. And I decided to use um, that ribbon as an embellishment. Okay. And I will put this then on a card base, okay? Don't forget if you're watching to please comment throughout. Okay, now here's um, something a little bit different, okay? Instead of, instead of um, cutting strips, I can do some punching. Okay, so I punched these with the Timeless Label Punch, one of my favorites, I have to admit, one of my very, very favorites, okay. And um, I haven't decided how I'm, okay, we're gonna try this. Okay, so then remember I have these other solid foils, no design, and I'm gonna cut out one of each of the colors a foil using the everyday label punch okay and then I'm going to mount each of these on here and this time I'm going to put the DSP on dimensionals I think I'm going to use I grabbed my small one, so I'm going to put three on. And I will be giving away these cards tonight. I'm looking at the names, I think. Pretty much everybody that uh, I'm seeing your names, I think, has uh, won a Facebook Live card at some time or another. I hope so, anyways. I tend to do it um, with most of my lives. I won't say all, but definitely with most. Oh, Carol, I'm glad you like them. I should leave these a little closer, shouldn't I? Okay. haven't used the Noble Peacock rhinestones yet, so I definitely want to use those this time. Okay. I'm going to use the same standard size card front layer, which is five and a quarter by four inches. Okay. I don't know why I keep going to the same order here. And I'm going to make another with this new adventure card. And this time I think I'm going to use the Pretty Peacock color to stamp. So let me clean this off with my wonderful chamois. I'm going to have a trick for using that um, with the Stamparatus as well. And actually I think I'm going to put this in the middle this time. Okay. Okay, so far so good, keeping my arms out of the ink. Okay, and then here's a trick too. When you're doing things like this and you want them lined up straight and you um, 
have to work on the spacing. Here's a tip. Just put a wee little bit of adhesive on. See how small that is? Just a wee little bit. And then what you can do is start laying them down. And I think this is easier than, you know, getting out a ruler and measuring and all that. Don't make it so difficult. You know, keep it simple, keep it fun. So this is one of those little tricks of the trade I'm going to share with you. Okay, now that's pretty much it. So now what I can do is I'm just going to press these into place, but to make sure they are secure for the long run and they stay straight, they will need more adhesive. I just lift it up a little bit and push it down. So I'm holding it in place, lifting one of the ends. Okay, that had a pretty good size on to start with, but I'll just add a wee bit more. Okay, this is also great, um, and I probably do this even more when I'm scrapbooking. Okay, laying those photos out and you know, you're moving things around. Okay, and now let's use some of our Noble Peacock rhinestones. And for that, I'll wanna get out my um, handy, what do I call it? Take your pick tool. Okay, my handy take your pick tool with that putty end. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab some rhinestones and there's a couple of different sizes here. Looks like three different sizes. Okay, and I'm gonna put that one there. I need this fun blue. Maybe a couple little ones. And, uh, you know, you do it however you want. Put the rhinestones where, um, wherever you think um, they're needed or desired. Okay. Here I'm using five on this one. Okay. I might even put a couple over here. And then how about a pretty blue one over here? Everybody love rhinestones? I sure hope so, since I'm going a little crazy with them here. Okay. Okay, I think that's good. And then that will be the front, and I'll attach this to a card base. I can put it on a white card base. Um, either one of these I can put on a white card base like that. Okay, or I could put in a card base of one of these colors, the Blueberry Bushel, Pretty Peacock, or Old Olive. Either way, I think they'd um, be really nice. Okay, so like I said, I'll be giving those three cards away. So be sure and comment. You get extra credit, extra entry if you um, click share, okay? And one last thing I want to show you before we go on to the um, Stamparatus. And I won't do this one completely just because I'm watching my time here. But here's something fun to do. You can use this Taylor Tag Punch to make um, a fun background on your cards. And it works like this. Okay. What I would do is, and it, to me it's easiest if you just start with one of these edges, one of these short edges, and then the tip up here the corner meets the top, okay? So, that's a good place to start, okay? And then you can go like this, or, you know, start a pattern across however you want, you know. 
and you're just going to fill up the whole card base like this. And you can do it randomly or you can um, develop some kind of pattern. It makes no difference whatsoever, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to keep going. You can see I need to cut a few more. Um, and you can leave spaces if you want to. You know, do it like this. So it kind of looks like um, you've got the, the grout in there. You can do it like that, okay? Or you can push them right up against each other, either way. But it makes for a neat background. You cover the whole paper. Hi, Vicki. You cover the whole paper and then you can cut off the parts that um, hang over, okay? So that's the easiest way to do it. But it's just a fun, fun thing, okay? All right, so now let's get to the highlight of tonight. I've got all these punches sitting out here. Okay, so I did a little sample on scrap paper. Okay, played around with it a little bit. But I want to show you how to do the two-step stamping with... with the Stamparatus. Okay, now yesterday, yesterday, last week, when I used the um, Stamparatus, we were working right here. Tonight, we're going to add this piece. Whenever you're working with a photopolymer set, photopolymer, that's a stamp that you can see all the way through, you wanna have this black foam mat in place, okay? Um, if you're working with red rubber, you don't need it. So last week we were working with red rubber. I used the Stamparatus like this without the mat. Um, that's because red rubber is a little thicker and it has that cush of the rubber. Um, photopolymer stamps do not, okay? So what I did is I took a piece of this grid paper. How many of you own the Stamparatus? How many of you own the Stamparatus or have purchased it? Okay, some of you, none of you. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to also map out my, um, to think exactly where I had it before four inches by five and a quarter piece of cardstock. And I'm going to take a pen. Sandy, you do. Oh, Vicki, you're gonna need this. You're gonna want it after this. There's so many uses. So over the next couple weeks, um, if you missed last week's Facebook Live, definitely take a look because at the end, I give you some tips on different ways of um, different tips to make sure that your stamped images are straight and that um, they are centered. And we did it with punches, with dies. Um, oh, Patty, don't say that. Don't say that. No, oh, just kidding. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no, whatever. I understand. I understand. But I love our Stamparatus. Remember when you're using the Stamparatus, these magnets are super, super strong. You do not want them next to each other because they'll snap together and um, break. And you, we have replacement magnets, but, you know, don't spend the money on replacement magnets. Spend it on stamps, right? Okay, Sandy, this should be a help to you then, okay? Actually, that would be a good thing to do for a class, all Stamparatus stuff. I have to think about that. Okay, so what I did was, um, and there's there's different ways to do this. You can do this on your grid paper, which I did. I What did I do with my sample? So I had my grid paper laying here, okay? I mapped out where my cardstock was going to be and I set this down, put my cutting plate in, flipped it over, and picked up the stamp, 
okay? So you can do it with the grid paper or you can just do it with the cardstock that you're going to use to stamp on, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do this time so I can show you, okay? So I've um, done that and why did I mark the grid paper? That's so that when I make the second card and the third card and so on, I know exactly where to lay this down. So it's good for making multiples. Holidays are coming up. A lot of times people are making multiples of the same thing. Um, if you participate in a card swap, um, you need thank you notes or invitations for a wedding or baby announcements, whatever. You're making several of the same thing, okay? That's why I like to map it out. And I can, you know, I can remember, I always tend to work around the Stampin' Up! logo. So I usually put my bottom left corner here. But um, it is helpful to have, have the corners marked. Okay, now I'm just going to press down and pick up my stamp. And photopolymer will lift your cardstock a little bit. No worries, you just take the time to lift the magnets, keeping them apart, of course, and setting the cardstock back in place. Okay, so that's ready to go. So I'm going to start by putting the blueberry bush bushel ink on my stamp. I need to get some of this out of the way here. Okay, stick this in here. Okay, if you get ink on the stamping plate, don't worry about it, okay? It's not going to get on your cardstock. And I'm gonna simply flip it over, and I wanna make sure that I'm gonna press, you don't have to you know, push hard or anything like that or pound up, but just make sure you press firmly all the way around, okay? And then you can pick it up, okay, again. It's lifting a little bit, so I'm just going to make sure I have this in place just like I want it before the next step, okay? Now, and I'll take this off, now I have a second, I need a second cutting plate so that I can put this one on, okay? And there's a couple ways to do it. This looks a little tricky lining it up, but you, what you need to remember is there are... See these, um, where'd they go? These, those tiny little circles, those actually fit that open space in each of the peacock feathers. So it looks kind of daunting, it looks difficult, it really is not, because once you get a couple of those lined up, they all seem to line up pretty well, okay? So I'm just looking around. Yep, that looks good, okay. So I, oops, I got ink on there. Darn it, I'll have to cover cover that up with, um, I don't know, an embellishment or something. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do this, okay? I could use the one plate and I could take it out. You have to have it straight up and down to get it out and flip it. And now I have another cutting plate and I can do that. Since I'm only doing, um, and I usually only do it that way when I have three or more stamps that I'm putting on, but basically you have two cutting plates that fit in, or not cutting, stamping plates that fit in here. So it really gives you four stamping surfaces, okay? So I'm gonna put that top one in, and remember, straight up and down, straight, completely vertical for it to come in and out, okay? And then I'm just gonna press that stamp into place, I want to double check my cardstock. Even if your cardstock's off a little bit, it you know it changes how it stamps. Okay, so that's why I'm moving it around. Now this is where I decided I want to use instead of the old olive, I'm going to use the Granny Apple Green because it's a little brighter. Okay. And again, just make sure you're pressing down firmly all the areas of the stamp and you lift up. Now remember, that's a boo-boo from before. That wasn't part of the stamp. Okay, it's pretty, isn't it? 
Now, if you want, you can go a step further um, and give it even more color, okay? I can go in with one of my Stampin' Blend markers. I've got the light Granny Apple Green right here, and I'm gonna fill in this section. You could also use your Stampin' Write markers for this, okay? Very simple, and I'm not, you know, I'm just adding some color in there. I'm not fussing with coloring it in, you know, perfectly, okay? Okay, and um, you could even do something like this. That's not what I wanted. With a blender pen and color this in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to get some more color in the body of my peacock. So I'm just using this and it pulls the color from the stamped image. Okay, this is um, dampened. Okay, I think up on top, I'll put some of that pretty green also. Okay, one thing um, you can do as well, and I'll show you on this sample because I'm not sure if I want it on that. You can take an aqua painter and kind of just sweep over all of this real gently, just a little bit at a time. And it kind of fills in um, the background, kind of blends all these blue feathery veins together, okay? And I think that's kind of a cool look too. See how that is? Okay, should I do that on my card front? Sure, why not, Mary? <laughs> okay, See, I'm just filling in like that. Okay, but this is a nice way to be sure that the first stamp and the second stamp are lined up well together. Okay, without all that trial and error. And once you have it in place, you can do it over and over again for as many cards um, as you need to make for the same type of card, okay? So you can see I'm just doing this quickly, just kind of, this is filled with water. Okay, and very lightly too, because I'm not using, I did not stamp on watercolor paper. So I don't want my paper to get too mushy. I just want to do it enough to blend these feathers. I'm doing these green ones also. Okay? What do you think? Besides my goof, which I did with my finger. Okay? I think it's very pretty. Okay? Now, if I wanted to add a sentiment, how about... Um, Let's do the You Are Incredible. Now, if I had several of these to make, um, this would be great for students and teachers too. Okay. Now, since I have a third stamp I want to add, and I'm gonna make several of these in my hypothetical world, okay. And one thing I should say too, when you want to clean this in between or it's getting a little, you know, you're getting a little too much ink on your stamp, I just fold my chamois in half and do this, okay? Now it is a good idea to have paper towel close by because you don't want any remaining water on the plate um, simply because you don't want it to drip onto your cardstock. Okay, so now I've, I've had it like that. I've taken it out. I've cleaned it. I'm going to flip it around. Okay, and now I'm going to place this stamp where I think I want that. I'm going to try. I was thinking I could try and cover that up. Maybe I 
Maybe I'm trying too hard here. Okay. I'm going to try and cover up that mistake there. Not sure if this will work or not, but we'll find out, won't we? And I see I'm getting my head in there. Actually, let's put it up because I know what I can do instead. Okay. So I'm looking, I think that's pretty straight. So I'm going to flip this over and pick up that stamp. Okay. Make sure your cardstock is exactly where you had it to start with. It seems like and it, 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 the paper will move a little bit more when you're using the photopolymer when you lift the stamps off um, than it does with the rubber. There's really nothing wrong. Um, and again, you don't need to worry about that excess ink on the stamping plate because it's not going to touch your cardstock. Okay. And there I have it. And now to cover up my little mistake here where's my take your pick tool i'm going to add some kind of embellishment do you think pink would work on here i'm not sure about that so i'll just stick with um i'll do the blue ah, get rid of my mistake right I'm going to add a couple more. Maybe one up here. I'm going to use a large one. And a large one maybe down here. Okay. And I think that looks pretty good. What do you think? Okay. So was that helpful to know how to do the um, two and three step stamping. Oops, see what I mean? I got lucky that time, they didn't break. Okay, let's do one more. And this time we're gonna change the color palette completely. Okay, so I'm trying to think here and I'll, I'll put that on a card front as well. I know I don't always do start to finish um, cards and projects, but I feel like I can show you more things and give you more ideas. Um, there's no way I could, you know, end up making five, six, up, yeah, six cards start to finish. Okay. Um, but this way I was able to give you lots of ideas for using your punches. Um, creating different layouts and backgrounds okay and that paper towel you see what I mean you get a little excess water on there and I just don't want that to drip on my card front okay I think this is pretty good and that was cleaned and I'm gonna flip this back around because the most important part is the peacock more so than the sentiment and I think it's a good rule of thumb to always stamp the larger images first, okay? So I've got another piece of designer series paper, okay? And make sure use not just the corners, but the lines as your guides also, okay? And this time, I think I'm going to do Pretty Peacock. And I hope that this color combination I'm going to use turns out as pretty as I think it will. Okay. And again, just press all the way down, making sure that you've got all these fun feathery edges. Lift it up. Perfect. Okay. And... Let's see, what do you think would be a good color to go with the pretty peacock? I'm thinking I want something, bam, bright. Actually, how about, what do you think of this? Uh, 
any of those float your boat let's just go with the um gorgeous grape for now oh ladies i'm past an hour goodness okay so i'm going to ink up this other one and i'm going to press that down again pressing firmly over the stamp and lift it up oh that's kind of pretty isn't it okay now I could go back in there and fill in with um, another color marker let me see what I have here this one's dark Highland Heather but this would work too filling it in with something like that okay I'm going to put some up here on the top. I have no idea what this part of the peacock is called. I'll call it the crown. Okay. Um, now something you can do here too, a different way to use these coordinating rhinestones would to take, be to take these small ones and put them on the individual feathers okay it's a lot it'll use up a lot but um, boy for those people who like bling they will love it okay and you just go on and on and on do you know of anybody who would like this much bling I don't always do that much bling, but sometimes uh, sometimes I just go for it and find it to be fun. Oh, I know, it's power outage. Oh, no. We had a storm here earlier. It didn't last very long, though. Okay, see what I mean? It takes up a lot of your rhinestones. And remember, if you don't have these color rhinestones, you can um, color any of your rhinestones with Stampin' Blends markers. Okay, I feel like there should be one up here. Okay, so that's done. Now, I can go even a little bit fancier if I can find my pen here. Here it is. I can also use my Wink of Stella and add some shimmer. This might be hard to see on the video, but the Wink of Stella is great for just adding that wee bit of shimmer. Okay, I think I'll kind of drag it along these purple sections, the gorgeous grape sections. Okay. Ooh, there. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is go back and fill in a bit. Does everybody know this is how you clean your um, blender pens? Just go back and forth. I apologize for going so late, ladies. I guess I got really excited about all these different things to show you. It seems like it always takes me a little bit longer when I'm actually doing the live than when I um, go through things and do a quick practice and such. Okay. What do you think, ladies? Okay. I will finish this off, put it on a card base, and one of you um, will receive this. Okay. Um, why don't we finish off I'm going to flip that plate, plate around and finish off with, where is it? Here it is. 
finish off with the sentiment. Okay. All right. Um, my next Facebook Live will be Thursday on my um, VIP group, Stamp and Peace VIP group. If you're not already a member of the VIP group, all you have to do is go to that uh, Facebook group, you know, search it in Facebook, Stamp and Peace VIP, and um, click join or request to join. And I do approve those um, just because I don't want any scam people, scam artists, you know, getting in on that. Um, so it might take me a day. Um, usually I see them pretty quickly, but sometimes with my work schedule, um, it does take a little bit longer. Okay. Remember when you are storing your Stamparatus, you want to take the plates off. Okay. So I'm going to set this aside because I need to clean that before I put it away. I'll also mention that we have this great Stamparatus bag, which I love. I'm going on a crafting weekend with some friends, um, in the near future. Um, but it's great. I can put the entire apparatus. I can put the grid paper. I have extra plates. I have extra uh, magnets in here. All ready to go. Has a shoulder strap. So um, that's a wonderful thing too. Okay, final reminders. Today and tomorrow are the last days to take advantage of the bonus, bonus days coupon code offer from Stampin' Up. Spend $50, uh, I should say for each $50, you spend in an order, um, you can get a coupon code for $5 that you can use on your purchase next month. And what else? The extra extra recruiting promotion, $155 of product of your choice for just $99 plus tax. And um, free shipping on that. And then also um, be sure to go to my Stampin' Peas VIP group and see all the photos. I think Andrea made, I don't know, six, seven albums um, full of uh, stamp sets and dies and punches that you can get free with a qualifying order. So this is also great. Get some of those, pick up some of those, some of my free retired products um claim those and then place your order tonight or tomorrow for equal or greater value and you'll also get the coupon codes from stampin up so win-win okay um i will see you 2 p.m eastern standard time on uh stampin peace vip group on thursday and i'm going to show show you yet another way to use the stamparatus okay don't forget, all of my Facebook Live are saved to the video section of um, either this Stampin' Scrap with Mary Nabe page or my Stampin' Peace VIP group. Have a great night. Sorry for keeping you so late, but thanks for um, watching and sticking with me. I hope I've inspired you, and I hope you love the creations that we did today. Um, and good luck. You might be one of the winners of um, Noble Peacock card. Good night.